Charles Man show here with Charles McDonald, New York Daily Daily News writer, covering the NFL. Charles, what's up, brother? Nothing much, nothing much. Thanks for having me on. Yes, indeed, man. I'll start you off with the news of the day, man. Uh, Ron Rivera out in Carolina. You see, she is coming uh, the way it happened just suddenly today. Yeah, I mean, I figured, you know, this Carolina Panthers organization, it seemed like they were on the path towards a reset, but I wasn't expecting Rivera to get fired today. I, I, I guess, you know, losing to the, at the time, 2-9 and nine Washington team will get that done. And just the way that game ended with, uh, Kyle Allen, uh, I don't know if you saw that last play, but he lost the fumble for like 23 yards and they were on the two-yard line on fourth and goal. Yeah, so I don't know if how much that had to do with it. I, I thought Rivera was going to be gone after the season regardless. You know, so the time's a little bit weird. The end result is not that weird. Uh, and like I said, you know, it, it just kind of seems like this entire Carolina Panthers organization is about to hit the reset button after the season. And, you know, that, that probably includes Cam Newton going to a new team in the offseason as well. Yeah, Marty or Honey, I wouldn't be uh, buying any housing in Charlotte anytime soon. <laughs> Getting ready to leave. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what? I would have thought that Dan Quinn had been fired before Ron Rivera would have been fired, honestly. <laughs> and Dan Quinn yeah. still here somehow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Falcons fan at heart, so it, it's a, I, I, I got a chuckle thinking about the, how, how Quinn somehow lasted Rivera when uh, – when you know Dan Quinn is what they're they're three and nine now, so yes, yeah, he, he, he's nine. probably on his way out the door too. So it, it's a changing of the guards in the NFC South. What about Dimitrov? Should he be on on on, on the go too? Yeah, I, I think so. Just because you know you can't spend your entire off season. Yeah, you sign James Carpenter, you sign uh, Jamon Brown, you re-sign Tyson Barrow, you draft Lindstrom and McGarry in the first round, and you know to be fair, Lindstrom has been hurt the entire season. But how are you going to spend all those resources on the offensive line and it's still bad? Yeah. The, the Dimitrov, he has his, his his high points. I think, you know, looking at skill skill talent in terms of receivers and running backs and tight ends, he's been pretty good at that. But when it comes to building up the trenches, like outside of Grady Jarrett and Pac McKinley at times, he hasn't really done much there. So, uh, yeah, I think when you devote that many resources to one position group and it's still as bad, it just kind of, it, it, it just kind of stinks, and you know he's had a good run. It's been eleven seasons now. I, I think it's just time to get a new face in there. You know what hurts me about the Falcons is that when I see Matt Ryan going to a solid account at home, to me it blows my mind. At home, a solid account in your own home stadium. That's yeah. embarrassing to me. When it's the Cowboys in town, the Packers, the Seahawks, the Saints, even the Panthers on Sunday probably will happen the same way. It's like you're at home. And I feel like this, Charles, is that when he moved to a new stadium, he lost a lot of the core fans of the Falcons who can't afford those PSLs. And then they, then they hang out in that sideline club, which makes it be no environment in the place, which makes it even worse for the team to play in front of. Yeah, and I mean, and they lose a lot. So who wants to go spend a bunch of money to see a team that, yeah, at this point we know isn't good. It was, you know, I was watching the game on, on TV, uh, the, the Thanksgiving game, and you know, like it's Thanksgiving, so you might not get a big crowd, anyways. But it's just kind of sad to see it, how empty it was. Because I remember the last Falcon games, I the last Falcons game I went to was uh, the final regular season game at the George Dome in 2016 when they beat the Saints. And you know, they had Michael Vick and Roddy out there, but like the whole place was packed, and you know, it's just like it just felt like a different vibe, like a different, a different experience. And you know, they. We all know what happened in that Super Bowl, and they've been kind of they kind of struggled to attain that level of excitement in the fan base. But it, it's just it's a little sad what's happened to to our team. You got that right, and but I think the Panthers are going down in flames to help us ease a little bit of the pain. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And who knows? You know, Jameis Winston he might be on his way out in Tampa Bay too. Like, there's a lot of uh, a lot of transition going on in the NFC top right now. I know you're covering the day news, man. So the Giants, man, are a train wreck, man. Did, and did did you see us coming this year with them being this bad? And I just I just feel like Pat Shermer is just not a head coach. He's more of a coordinator now. He's kind of like Wade Phillips and North Turner. They're good coordinators, but they're not really good head coaches. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that because we all saw, you know, Pat Shermer when he was the OC in, in Minnesota. Like his quarterback was Case Keenum, and yeah, you know, it, it, it's not like. We know that Thielen and Diggs are maybe as good as a receiver duo as it gets in the NFL, 
But, you know, his quarterback was still his team, I and mean, their offensive line was pretty crappy. So, you know, the magic he was able to work that season was was pretty impressive. You know, he, I, I'm with you. He, he might just be that guy that's an offensive coordinator and not a great head coach. But it's it's really it's really gone downhill fast this year because the Giants are, are tricky because when you look at you just, you look at the roster and I know they shipped Odell out of here, but you look at the roster and you know it doesn't look as bad as they've performed on a week in week out basis. And I know they've had some injuries to you know Saquon and Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram uh, and Golden Tate missed his last game, but still like you you would hope you could do a little bit better than two and nine. And uh, I think the turning point for them this season was when they lost to the Jets at home. And since then, like everything's really just spiraling for them. Uh, it, they just haven't been able to come together as a cohesive team. They suffered injuries in the offensive line. I mean, it, it's just a mess. And the defense, I mean, the defense is one of the worst in the week. Like last on Sunday, you know, in a snow game against Aaron Rodgers, like I know with Rodgers from Wisconsin, but you just let him throw for four touchdowns on you. And on three of those touchdowns, nobody was even guarding the people that were in the end zone. Like it's, it's really bad up there. You, they have a really young secondary. Uh, DeAndre Baker has shown flashes, but he's been pretty inconsistent. Like, they just have a really long way to go. And you know, to digress from five and eleven last year to now year two and ten, it's it, 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 it's just it's hard to look at all that and not think there needs to be a major change at the end of the season. Yeah, I think Dave Gettleman needs to go too. Another the former Panther needs to go, Dave Gettleman, yeah. because uh, whatever he did, not good. Yeah, they, they, you know, like I said, they they don't really have a cohesive team, and you know they're kind of stuck in between. Oh, we drafted Saquon number two overall last year, uh, but also at the same time we have a rookie quarterback, so they're stuck between like win now and rebuild for the future, and they even like double down on winning now by trading two picks for Leonard Williams, and then they're going to extend him after the season, and he just had his first tackle for loss for the season on Sunday against Green Bay and they just traded for him and they're going to extend him after the season. So, you know, I, I don't really know what it is. It's kind of like the Island of misfit toys with the Giants are right now. And yeah, I, I, I don't, if I had to guess, I, I don't think Pat Shermer is the coach next year, but you know, uh, maybe they want continuity for continuity sake and they'll bring him back after, you know, failing to approve upon a five and 11 record. Do you feel as if, Look at the NFC East right now. Was that Dallas is six, six and six, Philadelphia is five and seven. Could a Eli Manning led team have them in the lead, in the lead of the division right now if they stuck with Eli throughout the season here, rather than going to Daniel Jones at that, doing that Tampa game? Uh, I don't know. I don't know because Eli, Eli was really bad those first two games of the season. Like the the, the thing that kind of gets lost a little bit was they didn't switch to Daniel Jones because because it was time for like a youth movement, they switched to Daniel Jones at least earlier in the season because Eli was playing really bad football. I mean, like really, really bad. So I don't really know if they're even better than two and 10 with Eli. I think Daniel Jones with his running a little bit gives him, uh, uh, you know, gives him a little bit of an edge over Eli, but by and large, it, it's, this is just, a, this is just a bad football team. And I don't really know if there's a big enough difference between those two guys where Eli would have made a big difference because you know, Daniel Jones is fumbling at the same rate that Eli does. He's still throwing interceptions. Like it, it's it's large, by and large the same. Daniel Jones can just run a little bit better. Now, would that be an Eli Manning farewell game to start him just to say bye one more time? Is that in the works? Maybe because with them being so far out of it, they put, they put butts in the seats for those last little couple of games at Giant Stadium they have coming up. Uh, maybe if like if it's like week seventeen and. You know, if they're sitting at two and thirteen, like, hey, who cares at that point? Uh, maybe then, but I, I don't think that's in the cards. I think they're just gonna ride out this Daniel Jones wave, and then at the end of the season, it, it's kind of up to Eli because either he can retire or maybe he can try and go be a starter somewhere else. I don't know where that would be for him, but uh, I, I think it's pretty much over for him in uh, in New York. He should retire. Philip Rivers should join you. Retire. If you came in the draft oh, yeah. together. Both of you need to take an L. Retire. It's time. It's time for Rivers for sure. <laughs> Godly. You know, that was pretty hard while he lost on Sunday, right? You seen a, a game in like that, like a pass interference call, didn't did for did for a field goal. Did you see have seen a, a game in in that fashion the way the Chargers the Chargers to me find new ways to lose every week. It's a new way. It every week. <laughs> every way to lose. <laughs> I, I mean any 
possible way you could think to lose a game. I'm sure there's a Chargers game that fits that description. Like, it's wild. And it, every single week this year, every single week, or if, not, maybe not every single week, but it feels like all of their losses have come where Rivers has the ball in his hands, like a minute left, no timeouts. He's got to go the whole length of the field. And, you know, he, he used to be able to manage the situations better when he's a little bit younger, but now you see he's put into, like, these high-stress situations and he just doesn't have, like, the juice to go make it happen anymore. So I, I, I think it's time for him to retire. Like, when, when they were talking about uh, potentially Tyrod Taylor coming in as a starter for the rest of the season, like, I think that's, that's all you really need to know about where this thing is headed with Rivers. You got that right. It could be potential Cam Newton landing spot. L.A. Chargers. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he sells PSLs. So, hey, L.A., sign Cam Newton. Get him out of the NFC, please. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what about the Jets, man? Uh, Adam Gase, to me, man, just – I don't know what people see in the, see in the guy. He can't really coach to me. So he's going to want a good coordinator with the right talent, but not really a head coach. And he throws guys on the bus really, really fast. Yeah, it, it's it's been a mess there this season. I mean, they they started off one and seven, and they they got that three game winning streak, which I think the fans made them. It, it made the fans made them think that they are better than they really were. Because uh, at the end of the day, like going into that game for Cincinnati, they were still four and seven. So they, we're, we're still we're still talking about a bad team. But you know, there were a handful of Jets fans who thought they were about to mount a run to the playoffs, which I was kind of like pump your brakes on that one a little bit because. Uh, you guys got a long way to go before you can get that far. But, I mean, to just get embarrassed by the Bengals at home. And, you know, if, if you watch the game, which I hope you didn't, that, that Bengals-Jets game. I did. Good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched that game. And, and to be honest, the score could have been a lot worse than 22-6. to 6. And you're talking about a team that was 0-11 coming to that game. 0-11. So, I, I don't know if, if Gase is, like, going to get this thing turned around long term. I think his track record in Miami suggests that that's not going to happen considering how they got worse every year that he was there. And the last two years, they had uh, the second to worst offense in the league to the Jets. Uh, and this is just kind of who he is. You know, you're going to get, you're going to get pretty poor offensive play. You're not going to move the ball that much. You're not going to be able to run the ball that well. And that's just kind of what, where they're stuck in, you know, Christopher Johnson, the owner, he said that Gates is going to come back next year, but Honestly, his word doesn't mean that much because he said the same thing about Mike McCagney, the GM, who they fired after the draft. And he said the same thing about Todd Bowles, who he ended up firing, too. So, you know, I, I think they're at a week-by-week week evaluation with this thing. And Sam Darnold, I, I think he's really talented. Uh, I think he's got the potential to be a franchise quarterback for them. But he can only afford to squander so many years before he's broken. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, the protocol is moving forward, but I don't think it's a lock that Gates is back here next season. I got a couple more for you here, Charles. Uh, Mike Tomlin's coaching job there. I mean, when Ben, when I thought they were done for the year, then they traded for me from Minka Fitzpatrick. I thought, why you doing that for you? you, you Ben's gone. I mean, it's going to be a bad year for you guys, but they're seven and five and, and, and this is for a wild card spot behind Buffalo. And has this been Mike Tomlin's best coaching job in a, in a long time, if you ask me? Yeah, it's really impressive because you got to think with this quarterback now, Duck Hodges. He was on the practice squad coming into uh, coming into the season, and you know I know on good record that the XFL was trying to sign Duck Hodges before the season. So, you know they had Ben Roethlisberger. He got hurt. Uh, they traded away Josh Dobbs to the, Jag- to the Jaguars. They had Mason Rudolph who got benched for poor play last week. So, you know they're on their fourth quarterback. They have a winning record. Like you said, you know that make it to pass trade. It looked a little bit questionable at the time because. I, I think anyone with common sense was saying, oh, man, you know, Mika's a good player and all, but you might have just traded like a top 10 pick for him or even a top five pick if this thing really goes south. But they've turned it around. Tomlin is having an incredible year. And the fact that they're even like in playoff contention with a chance to finish with a winning record after how the season started is is pretty mind-blowing. And it, it's just kind of funny that, you know, every year you have all these Pittsburgh Steelers fans that want to fire him. And now they're all, you know, praising him. You know, it, it, he's a good coach. He's a really good coach. Like, they, they win a lot of games every year, and, and it starts up top. Got there. Right. Last one I say in that vision, last one I got for you is the, the Ravens run. Did you see Lamar Jackson taking the NFL by storm like the way he has and how that offense and getting Mark Ingram and those tight ends really help Lamar Jackson and that offense run 
smooth the way it does and wears people down. The Ravens defense, the Ravens defense gets, up, gets up on people, and that they wear you down with that running game and time of possession and, and control the clock and win those games in dominating fashion for the most part. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I've been I've been on Lamar as a first round quarterback since the year he won the Heisman. Like that game, I remember that game he had versus Florida State, uh, where Florida State came in with a good defense. He dropped like forty five points right on their head, and he made it look so easy. That's when I was in. I was like, if you can just get this dude to make like the flashes of his passing become more consistent, then I don't see why this guy can't be someone that you know, we're talking about as like a long-term starting quarterback in the NFL. And now you're really trying to see him take those steps this year. And, you know, what, what's crazy about his improvement this year is not only he's a better passer, he's also a better runner too. Like he's leading the league in yards per carry. Uh, him and Mark Ingram are both in the top five in yards per carry. And I think Gus Edwards is also in the top five. So they have three running backs, at least going into last Sunday's game against the 49ers. They had three players in the top five of the league in yards per carry. So, I mean, they're just mauling teams. Lamar also leads the league in touchdown passes. Uh, it, it's it's really special what they've been able to do there. And the defense has steadily improved week after week after week. And this is not the same unit that gave up 40 points to the Browns in, like, week two or week three. They've gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah, I, I think this should probably be the Super Bowl favorite right now because they just beat the 49ers at home. I know that was a bit of a messy game, but uh, it kind of showed you everything that you – expect our Super Bowl champion with the offensive lines playing well. Lamar made enough plays to win the game. The defense held through and then the special teams came through the big play of the game. Like this is a really, really good, really complete team and they're just so much fun to watch. Like I, I really hope they go all the way just because I'm a big Lamar fan and I think the Ravens are the most exciting team in football. And like for for me it's like the most the most fun I've had watching football since that twenty sixteen Falcons seat. You know Lamar and you and I have something in common. We all do not like Bobby Petrino. So we all have something. <laughs> we all have something in common. We don't like him. I thought you were about to say black. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> that as well. <laughs> but yeah, we all cannot stand Bobby Petrino, which is. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I, I, you know, because I remember before the con- so the combine when Lamar came out in the draft, I I talked to him a little bit, and he gave Bobby Petrino credit for uh, you know putting in a pro style passing game, and I was like, oh, Petrino. But uh, all right, I'll I'll, I'll give props for his doing that one, but I can't stand it. Yeah, true. Because he don't like the dude at all. He don't like him at all, which is thank is is refreshing because I can't stand the guy either. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. I hope the Ravens go all the way, too, man. I feel like they have a great level. And what our theory is that I hope John Harbaugh has somebody on staff who's taking notes for Greg Roman because he might get a head coaching job behind what he's done with Lamar Jackson in the offense right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, Greg's been outstanding. You know, it, and I think what helped Greg was he ha- he also had that similar experience with Colin Kaepernick back in the day when he was uh, – the offensive coordinator for the 49ers. And he, he's had experience with Tyrod Taylor, too. So, you know, he, he had his test runs, and now he got, like, the, the jet pack with Lamar in it. And it's all coming together beautifully. Hey, Charlie, this has been good, man, having a show, brother. We'll have to do it again real soon, man. And stay warm, man. It's, I know it's getting cold, and, and it's the wintery, man. Yeah. So, so, man, stay warm up there, man. I know it's cold in the, in the New York City area, man. Covering these Atlanta Hawks here, man, and traveling with the Hawks. I know going to Northern cities for these pneumonia trips, man, are terrible. Like, we have a trip from, get this, at Boston and at Orlando, a pneumonia trip, at Miami, it's at cold, Chicago. Bro. Under under pneumonia trip, I'm like you're trying to get us all sick. NBA, what's wrong with y'all? You know, <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. I was in Atlanta on Saturday, and I came back for the game on Sunday, and I was like, "Yo, take me back, please, take me back." <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, brother, have a good one, man. We'll talk to you real soon, man. It was fun, man. All right, for sure. Just let me know. For all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions. Also, a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. 
Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, WinterGuard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Is maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis. 
Folks, back here in the Gerald the Boss Man Show here with Bob Marlin, Louisiana Raging Cajuns head coach out of the Sun Belt Conference. Coach Marlin, how are things going with you guys, man? Everything's good, JR. How are you? Coach, I'm doing great, man. So this Christmas time is almost here. The end of the year is coming up here fast. I'm, basketball's a full swing. I'm having a, a blast, man. Well, it's, it's basketball season, that's for sure. And, and we actually start conference play here coming up in, in another week. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you all playing uh, 20 games this year. Is that correct? Yeah, they changed it. So they threw a couple of games in on us before Christmas. It's going to kind of crowd things up, but it's time. I hear that, Coach. Now, Coach, what may I ask you this, man? You've been in Louisiana for 10 years, which is longevity. It's very, it's very rare in this business of college, bad, college coaching, as much as the carousel turns every year. So what has been the key to your longevity in Louisiana for so, so long, Coach? Well, we work at it pretty hard, got good staff, good players, good administration, and, and uh, just to have been able to, to win and, and survive. And we, we've had – uh, some really good teams here, and it all stems with good players, though, Joe. You know that. We, we recruit good guys and, and try to get them better and really develop our players, and we've had good success with that. And, and uh, the nine years that I've been here, we've won more games than, than any team in the Sun Belt, so we're proud of that. Now, Coach, player development is very key at the mid major level because you you got, you got to kind of find a guy and, and project him out as a junior and senior. His body feels like he's stronger. He can be more, more mentally developed as a person. So, so talk about that for the entry level coach, having to find guys that there'll be late bloomers that junior and senior year, maybe your red shirt they got to make sure you get them for a four or five years so when that those last years they getting ready to really help you out and win those those big games in some of the conference there for you guys. Well it's important to evaluate your, your prospects and, and uh, really project where they're gonna fit, like you said. And and our staff's done a good job of that. Uh, one of the guys with me was at Sam Houston with me and we did a really good job there too, we felt like. So Looking for a guy that may be just a tad undersized, uh, and you and I were talking about some players earlier that uh, are really good players, but maybe just a tad undersized to, to make it to the NBA or make it to the Power Five level, and uh, project where they're going to be. If the, if the body types thin, you got to see if the, if the shoulders and uh, they're going to be able to put on some strength, some weight. Uh, we work at that part of it too, as well as nutrition piece here. We're we, we're very big in all that. And try to see where they'll fit in. And if you can have a guy with you, Jr. for two or three years that have been in your system, I've always felt they're going to top a, a junior college player that comes in. It'll take him a year to learn learn the, the ropes. So uh, it's a little bit harder these days to to take young guys and, and be patient because of the, the transfer portal and things that are going on at the high major level. You want to get an older guy and a stronger guy if you can. Uh, but you really need a blend of both. Oh, yeah, Coach. Having that, that class balance is very key to sustainability. You know, as you know, in the business, you know, some schools are just transfers, all just fifth-year guys, JUCO guys, staying old to stay old but never developing the program. So, you know, they're trying that win-now mode. But for, for 80, administration allows your coach to actually develop talent and understand that, hey, it takes us a process here. Then, like you said, like Kevin, you've been losing all those years. It can work out for 80. The administration is behind that and not just trying to go for that quick win every year here. Right, and uh, it, it, it has been a, a trend with some schools. They try to take too many transfers, don't get the chemistry the way you want it. And and in uh, return, you've got to work on your culture every year. And some coaches can do it. Uh, I, I certainly have stayed away from that. We've had two grad transfers here, uh, one one from Vanderbilt, one from Oklahoma State. And one worked out really well, and the other one was, was good, but it wasn't as good as it could have been. You got there, right, Coach? Coach, I want us all to talk about this, Coach. You know, this, I feel like the strength coach is one of the key coaches on any your program, Coach, because that guy's with the players almost as much as you and assistants are with them, was getting them ready physically and mentally and getting them to take them to all those conditioning drills to make sure, and nutrition as well, to make sure they're able to defend like crazy, play hard for you guys, especially come the dog days of January and February and then to March, especially when, when, when a conference like the Sun Belt, where it's a one big league, where that conference tournament in New Orleans is very key to whether you go to the big dance or not. Yeah, and, and it's something that we've worked on, uh, and it's really improved our administration. It's uh, improved that position for us, uh, Jr. When I came, we had uh, two strength coaches. Uh, one, you know, one with football, and the other was assistant football. <laughs> and that's who we had. He he would fill in with us for, and we did that for one year. 
And then we wound up being able to fund a position that helped football. And then after the second year, uh, they went strictly basketball. And then we've added on since then. So we've got our own guy that travels with us. And it's very important. And we've lost two guys in the NBA. One of our guys worked with Alfred and did a great job. He's now an assistant uh, strength coach with the Indiana, Indiana Pacers. And then we lost uh, the guy that replaced him, did a great job for us. And uh, he worked for a year with Philadelphia 76ers. And then has, has resurfaced in the league, actually. He's at uh, UTA. So we've had guys that come in and move on. And the, the guy we've got now, uh, John Uribe, does a fantastic job for me. He was an assistant at Florida. And they went to the Elite Eight a couple of years ago with Mike Wyatt. And I was able to grab him off that staff. So he, we won't keep him too much longer either. But it's an important piece of your staff. They're with those guys every day. And uh, they have a unique uh, relationship with each player. Speaking of Indiana, Coach, we see them uh, Friday night. The Hawks do uh, against the Pacers on Friday night. So I'll definitely try to find him and, and maybe shake his hand for sure. God, I know that we play those guys here at home on Friday night. So I know yep. the Hawks always. Uh, Indiana always a tough battle for the Hawks for sure, <laughs> always. J- yeah, Jason Manikowski. He's a, he's a good one and uh, really works at it and, and has found his niche. Now, Coach, you know, you guys won 19 games last year, went to the NIT first round. Uh, so this offseason, Coach, what did you guys prioritize for di- this year to make sure that you guys can, you know, improve over last year's 19-win season and be even better than you did than you were? Well, we had some changes on our uh, roster. We we had uh, four we had four juniors, excuse me, and uh, three of them are not. And uh, two of them averaged double figures. And it was disappointing because we talked about those young guys coming along. And I'd had two guys who have been with me for three years, and uh, one of them for four years. And they just they didn't didn't want to step in and, and buy into the team. So uh, we moved those guys along, and we wound up signing a bigger class. We had two players setting out. Uh, we signed three high school guys early, and we signed three junior college players late. And uh, added uh, just a, a, a more talented, a bigger roster, and uh, – a group that has got the potential. We still are working on piecing it together and getting our rotation down. But I like this team. I think we're a better team than we were a year ago. And Coach Ford's recruiting in Louisiana. You know, there's so many options in Louisiana for his basketball. So how do you set yourself apart when you're trying to recruit that area? Because you know Louisiana's a hot bed for bad talent for basketball as well as football, of course, as we know with LSU and those guys down there. But I know trying to get those guys who want to play for you and grow is kind of a, you know, a thing you kind of sell yourself to amongst these, all these options these kids have nowadays down in, say, Louisiana. Well, it, it is a great state for talent, and you talked about football. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the NFL, the most players from any state are from, from Louisiana uh, in the NFL, which if that does hold true with bigger states like Texas, California, and Florida, it's pretty impressive. So uh, basketball is the same way. And we've got guys like Alfred Payton that, that we snatched out of New Orleans that, that was pretty much overlooked and and uh, really developed and uh, of course, his dad was a great football player at Grambling and, and played in the Canadian Football League for, for many, many years. Uh, but try to project those guys and find them, and then we sell our university. You know, we get the second largest university in the state, right at 20,000 students. And after LSU, who now recruits nationally, uh, to be honest, and, and that that's good. It helps basketball in the state, but it helps us also. So gives us an opportunity to, to get some guys that are borderline SEC players uh, to come and join our staff. And we usually have to compete with Louisiana Tech and Tulane for those type players. Uh, but we've had a lot of success doing it and, and picked up some, some really good ones over the last couple of years in Cedric Russell, uh, Kobe Julian, Jalen Johnson. And then this year, Malik Wilson, a freshman we got, I think you'll really like. And coach playing in the Cajun Dome is something else in experience for a good young man as well. To play in front of twelve thousand people every night, scream, screaming fans are going crazy for the Cajuns. It's something else for that young man jump as well. If you ask me, coach. Yeah, it, it is a good facility, and, and certainly we we uh, upgraded. Uh, I guess three years ago, and they spent twenty two million dollars and gutted the interior of it. So it's it's just like an NBA arena on the interior. It's really nice and. Uh, unfortunately, the 12,000, we don't get that every night. You know, we average about 40, 48 to, 
to 55, and we've led the league for the last six years, I think. But uh, even when you have it half full, it's too big. But when it's half full, we've got a great crowd. Now, Coach, I saw your non-conference skills with Coach. You're 5-4 right now. I saw some high major matchups like you played in, out there in Tibbs, Arizona State, and some regional matchups like you got Louisiana Tech coming up on Saturday here for that regional matchup. So, Coach, you know, make your schedule for non-conference schedule. Do you try to – you know, get the regional games in, play the high majors because you have to raise money for school, of course, but also get get some guys close to home and get those guys some experience as well out there playing a different competition of all levels. Yeah, try to mix it up and and uh, and and play a couple of in-state schools when we can, and certainly look, want want to play some some high majors and test ourselves in the non-conference, see what we're all about, see how high we can go. Uh, as you mentioned, this year we're five and four. Currently, we we uh, lost a uh, game at Wyoming in overtime. We felt like we could have taken, and we just had an awful night. In fact, the nine years I've been here, it's the worst shooting night that we've had, and we lost in overtime, uh, which would have made us six and three. But we're excited about uh, you know, the, the game coming up with, with Louisiana Tech, and that's a rivalry that they had not played in quite some time, JR. And when I came in, after I was here one year, Mike White took the job at Louisiana Tech, and and uh, Mike and I are friends, and, and we talked about playing. He said, you know, I've got to build this thing up. Give me a couple of years. And and uh, we started the series, I think, his, his third year there. And we were fortunate to, to beat him twice. He took off and went to Florida. But Eric Conkle has kept the uh, series going and uh, done a really good job with it. We'll have a hard time in Ruston. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough place to play. But uh, – it is a great regional matchup for us and, and one that our fans and the people in the state really enjoy. Now, Coach, having a week off between Arizona State and, and playing Louisiana Tech has to be good to do some self-scouting as well, kind of drill down some drill work, get, get your guys better, find some things where you all can get better at and, and drill over in practice because it's rare you get a week off before you have to play another game. Yeah, and the most important part, we talked earlier about conference season is going to start early for us this year, so – uh, next week we have a conference game, so it, it gives us an opportunity to really clean up some things, reevaluate, as you said, uh, get prepared for Louisiana Tech, take our final exams, uh, which are going on this week, and and get multiple practices in per day, uh, and and get ready for the conference season. That's the best thing about it. But it is a good refresher uh, going into to conference. And coach, I'd be happy with the Sun Belt as a whole, coach, because looking at the league, 10 out of the 12 schools are 500 or better in non conference schedules. Non conference play, knowing you, some of y'all all have to play these bye games and play tough opponents because you can't get people to come, come play you guys at home. So to have 10 out of the 12 schools in the league, 500 or better in non conference, to me, says a lot about what you, the quality of coaching and players in the league that Sun Belt has to offer. Yeah, and, and that is good to get an extra home game. That's the best thing about playing 20 league games is you get another home game. It's hard for us to schedule games at home. Hard for us to schedule games on the road, to be honest, uh, JR. And I think that's out of respect a little bit. But uh, but it doesn't make scheduling any easier, and you have to explain that to your administration and your fan base. But uh, the, the Sun Belt's going to be a uh, balanced league. I, I feel that uh, there are several teams that could win the league and, and also could win the tournament. Uh, we were preseason pick fifth, maybe fifth or sixth right there. And Georgia state was right with us. I know they've got some really good wins early and as well as some other teams. So, uh, it's going to be a good conference. There's no doubt about it. Coach, well, that's one guy for you, Coach. You went against Ron Hunter for years, Coach. And I know the coaches have told me about playing against Ron's zone, how dynamic his zones was to play against. So for you, Coach, how was it playing against Ron Hunter's zone? George Georgia State, and I ain't glad to have Rob in there deal with that zone so much no more. <laughs> and Rob is there now. Well, it'll be a little different. There's no question. I know Rob as well. We played Tennessee last year, and I've known him for a while, back to when he was assistant at Texas with Rick and uh, Barnes, and then also even at Florida under Billy Donovan. And, Rob's a quality guy. He's going to do a good job there, and he's going to coach those guys hard. And I think Ron left a couple of really good players for him. I think they picked up some more and got a good commitment early in the early signing period that will help them in the future. Uh, so I'm anxious to see the style of play. And uh, I actually was recruiting last Thursday night in, in Louisiana, and I sat with Ray McCallum, who was on the staff at, at Georgia State with Coach Hunter and is now at Tulane, and we were talking about the league and, and also talking about Georgia State. So 
I, I think that they're one of the teams certainly that has a chance to do it. Uh, the zone might be a little different than what we've gone against in the past. You know, it causes us some problems. If you don't shoot the ball well, you're not going to win. But if you shoot it well, you certainly can out-rebound them. That's something we did every time. But uh, but they had the upper hand on us. And Coach Hunter, I, he got down here. I tried to get him to play. He doesn't want to play now. So <laughs> we want to get we we want to get Tulane on the schedule. But uh, but they're off to a good start. They didn't win many games last year, and they've got a good schedule that's fit them. And they're off to to a quick start over in New Orleans. Uh, Coach Marlon, it's been great to talk to you. I told you off there, man. Uh, Coach Driscoll talked very highly of you and I'm glad to talk to you it's been a pleasure hope to see you when you come to town play Georgia State hope to catch up with you then or at the Final Four as well coach sounds good JR appreciate it anytime thank you so much sir you bet All right, it's Bob Marlin on the Boss Man Show for all your photo video and voiceover needs check out the fine folks Blu-ray Productions they will take good care of you if you don't believe me you can see for yourself check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, WinterGuard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder WinterGuard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Folks, you have Ty Lee with us on the Boss Man Show from South Dakota. Coyotes currently 8-3 in non-conference play. Coach Lee, how does it go up there for you guys, man, South Dakota, man? Well, uh, the season's gone uh, pretty well. We, we just did have an injury a few games ago to our point guard. But we put seven of our 11 games on the road, played a really good Arkansas team, really good Washington team, and uh, to play our first seven of 11 on the road, to be 8-3 and three with an injury to an all-conference point guard. Our guys are doing a good job, and uh, for the most part, uh, happy with where we are in the season right now. And, Coach, you feel these high major matchups and – Quality mid major matchups really get you ready for that summit league play that's coming up here real soon because the summit league is a very tough league. People people sleep on the summit league about the talent, but to me it's a very very tough league with a lot of great coaches up and down the league from top to bottom. It really is a good league. You know what's different though, JR, is the the the, uh, the style of play. You know, I came from the WAC. Uh, that was my when I was a Grand Canyon with Coach Marley. Uh, a little bit more athletic league, not as 
skilled as the Summit League. Uh, when you play a team like Arkansas, Coach Musselman's one of my best friends, and you know they they're so good defensively and they're so quick and athletic. And Washington's the same way. I mean, Washington has six or seven guys with a wingspan of seven four or more. You know, they play that zone, but they also pressure in man and they they press a little bit. The Summit League is such a skilled league. Um, every year, it's the best three-point shooting league in the country. So you're seeing different styles, and uh, it it gets you ready. But it's it's interesting because you see so many different styles in the non-conference. Once you get in our league, you know you've got to guard the three-point line. And they don't get pressured as much. Uh, as you said, it's a really well-coached league. It's a very skilled league. Mike Dom, I think, ended up third in the NCAA in the history of scoring. Uh, John Conchar is playing with the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, it's a, it's a very good league. You got that right, Coach, and I feel like, you know, you all deserve it of more than one bid, but, you know, we, we, we know, you know how, that, we know how that, that goes, but I feel like with so with such talented teams, it, it shouldn't just come down to that one weekend in, in, in late February and early March there because, like you said, Coach, so many talented players and went on to play professional ball in the NBA and, and beyond as well, and like I said, they're great coach and that's the style of play. I feel like, like I said, more people should take a look at your league and really see what's going on and how what good basketball is taking place in it, from every team in, in your league. Well, it is, it is uh, uh, as I said, a very skinny, well-coached league. Um, it's tough. It's a mid-major. Uh, it, it does come down to that weekend, you know. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's different, but our volleyball team, for a women's team, ran the table in our league, did not lose a game. Uh, they only lost, I think, one game all year long. They didn't make the NCAA tournament. You know, when you're in a mid-major and, you know, one of those leagues that gets one team in, and even the WCC, St. Mary's, you know, they're always on that line. If they get beat, upset, Winthrop beat them at home. You know, if they if they lose another game, or two, they won't get in. But you and I both know they're capable of being in the, you know, winning a game or two in the NCAA tournament. The mid-major life is, you know, you're living on that edge, and if you, you know, if you don't win that league tournament, most of the time you don't get in. If you're trying to get in an at-large bid, you can have no upsets, or you can have no bad games. You know, so it's a, it is a very good league. Unfortunately, it is a one-bid league right now. Um, down the road, hopefully, you know, you work and you try to get two teams in. Now, coach, I know, like you said, having the peak at that right time, that final weekend, so. I, I think an important guy to your st- team is your strength and conditioning coach because he gets those guys in shape to be able to withstand injuries, withstand contact, withstand the bumps and bruises of the season, and be in shape, hopefully in peak condition. We need them the, the most right there in late February and early March at that tournament right there. Yeah, you're right. Because we go into the league, and right now we're playing games every two or three days, it seems like, and you're not spending a lot of time in the weight room. But once we get into the league schedule, it becomes more of a routine, you know, more of a Wednesday, Saturday, Thursday, Sunday type of deal. And your strength coach is very important. I always say that the strength coach uh, prevents injuries. The trainer obviously rehabs injuries. It's very important. When you're going to play three games in what in our league tournament, uh, we play three games in four days. Uh, you need your guys healthy. And I'll say this, I've been a, around a lot of mid uh league tournaments. The Summit League Tournament in Sioux Falls at the Denny Sanford Pentagon is the best league tournament I've ever been a part of. It's a 12,000-seat arena. It's like an NBA arena. They put the women at the same spot, same time. The place is packed. Uh, Sioux Falls embraces it. Uh, there's restaurants, bars around there. They sell. They got great food, beer at the venue. It's a. It is a, a really well run tournament. Big crowds. Uh, it's a great uh, conference. And uh, I would have got more national publicity because, as far as a conference, it's as good as any in the. 
And also, Coach, why are you safe for you go to the big room in the program since we and you last spoke last year when you got hired? I know you come in as a new coach year one. You're trying to lay a foundation and set, set some good here. So what's the biggest improvements have been since last year since we and you last spoke? Well, I will uh, say this. The head coach of Utah State, he's done a great job. And his staff has done a great job. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that guys that Coach Smith had here at Hanford. Usually when you have a changeover in staff, you know, you lose a guy or two. Everybody came back, and all our best players came back. Stan Amude was is the preseason player of the year. Last year, he averaged 15 points a game. Uh, he has a chance to have a great career playing basketball professionally. Tyler Hagedorn came back. He could have grad transferred. Every Christian Simpson, Tyler Peterson, Brandon Armstrong, they all came back. So we have a older group. And I give credit to Coach Smith and his staff for recruiting some really good players. And then I also give credit to our guys because they stuck around. They loved the University of South Dakota. They stuck around. They didn't leave. You know, there's so many kids that put their name in the transfer portal and end up leaving. But our guys all stuck around. The other thing I'm really proud of is we've really done a great job with the roster, our staff. We've got three red shirts sitting out right now that are going to be really good players in the Summit League. We do have an older group. We graduate five guys this year, so we have a chance to be good. But I think we have a chance to be really good in the future because we've done a good job on our roster. And so we can stay away from injuries. As you know, that's a big part of, of having a great year. But we have a chance to be really good this year. We have a chance to be really good in the future. You got there, right, Coach? I think what our fans don't realize is when it comes to mid-major schools, you have to kind of project the guy because, you know, you might not get the five-star or the four-star. You kind of have to project the guy, see when he feels out. He's on – he's going to be that junior or senior year. So, like you said, red shirt and those three guys going to make sure that you get stronger, get immersed in your system so they can come in next year and be ready to play right away because they've been around for a year, know the terminology, know, all, know the schemes, and also, like we said previously, getting stronger with the strength coach for those injuries. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know, <laughs> you hit right on the, the button there. The, uh, the high major guys, the McDo- anybody can walk into Tim and pick out the high major guys. Uh, you know, my mom can do that. She can walk in there and, and pick out, you know, the McDonald's All-American. Hey, he's really good. Yeah, I know that. you got to find the, the kid that loves the game and wants to work on his game and, you know, is going to get better over the course of two, three, four years. The advantage of, that we have, um, and I think it's throughout college basketball, the teams that are advancing deep in the NCAA tournament a lot of times are older. And if you want to be good at our level, at the mid-major level, you have to be old because, you know, you got to have guys that know your system, as you said, you know, get stronger, get better, get skilled, and then – you know, then they know, and then you got them together for three, four years, and you're playing some young guys in the NCAA tournament or playing the younger guys, even at high major schools, you feel pretty good because those those guys know the system. They play together. They're older, they're bigger, they're stronger. Um, and I think that's, that has uh, come to, ro- to roost in the NCAA tournament, too. You know, the teams that seem to make it uh, are older groups now that, that uh, those younger guys don't always make it to the deep into the NCAA tournament. And, Coach, we've kind of saw it already, this, this Don non-con season with Evansville beating Kentucky, Stephen F. Austin beating Duke. I mean, those teams were were not scary. They had guys who knew the system and out Duke no and Kentucky and won those games, which I think should give every major team confidence in the world that you're, you're not defeated before the ball's even tipped. You, you can do it if you do if you play your part and, and try to play the game plan, keep that game plan discipline, and do the right things. You, you can pull it off like Evansville and Stephen F. Austin did. Yeah, the, it, there's no question about it. Football, you know, is different. Obviously, you got bigger, stronger. You got to hit people and you got to. In basketball, you get one or two guys out there and you get older guys uh you can compete against the high majors if they're young and uh i tell our guys all the time this is college basketball you can go you can watch the scores tonight you see upsets all over the place that's what makes the tournament so much fun and you know if you don't play if you don't show up you're going to get beat at, in college basketball it doesn't matter if you're on the road at home uh there's 
Prairie, and I don't know of any teams, you know, that are dominant where they can just roll the ball out. And you've, you've already mentioned a few of them, but I go through the scores every night, and you see upsets after upsets. And if you don't show up, and that's what I tell our guys, if you don't show up, we're going to get beat tonight. It doesn't matter who we're playing in college basketball. Everybody has good players, too. And uh, there's no dominant, dominant team. And if, if, it's a, if, if it's a game where if you, don't, if you don't show up that night, you're putting your risk in everything. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, uh, you, you have a game Saturday night against the Maple State. So uh, always some of those guys on the film as you all prepare to play those guys Saturday. Well, we, we, we've had a really a long stretch. We've, we've uh, played 11 games. We've had two eight-day road trips. You know, we run, we won the Rainbow Classic. We went out to Hawaii and beat a very good Pacific team. Damon Stoudemire is doing a great job with that team. We beat them on the opening night. Then we beat Hawaii at Hawaii. And you know, that's not an easy deal. And then we beat Florida A&M. So we won the Rainbow Classic. We had an eight-day road trip. We came back, played two games, went to Arkansas and played that really good team there. And then we had another eight-day road trip. We're just happy to be home. We've, we've had uh, – we this is the first break we've had in our schedule. We gave them – we won last night against a very athletic Alabama State team. And we are giving our guys a couple days off. And then we're going to prepare for Mayville State on Saturday. we got finals this week. So very big week for our guys. And then we've got a couple games before we go into conference, which is Northern Colorado and UMKC. So we've got three games before Christmas. Uh, it's our time to get healthy, get some rest, get our bodies right. As you said, get in the weight room, get with our trainers, get our guys. We've been traveling so much. Uh, this is a very important stretch for us. So we're getting our guys academically uh, done with finals and they get stressed out on that and they should and then we got a game saturday and we got a couple games before christmas and then we we start league and you know how that grind is you got there right coach lee well coach lee thank you for your time again it's good to talk to you again i hope to talk to you again next year sometime as well coach yep call me anytime appreciate it all right thank you so much sir have a merry christmas happy new year to you coach you too all right this todd lee here on the boss man show Sally Beauty's new all-in-one hair color kits make it easy to color your hair at home. Get everything you need to color for beautifully radiant results. Loved by professionals, open to everyone. Sally Beauty. Thank you. 